الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله thank and praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى for granting us his tawfiq and hidayah to establish our salah in jama'ah in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for granting us the tawfiq and hidayah to come out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in accordance with the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our efforts and increases us in beneficial knowledge and in righteous actions. Ameen. In the treaties, Sittatun Usul or Sittat Usul in Azima, six tremendous principles or Al Usul Sitta, the six fundamentals in which we mention these fundamentals that aids a Muslim to establish the haq and to see it for what it is and to recognize its people and it makes it easy for him to therefore tread the path of Ahlul Haq, to tread the path of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah because these six, these six principles are from the principles of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We have discussed the first two principles, the first of which was al-ikhlas, sincerity in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the second which was unity, to be united as one, holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that the rope of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is his deen. And this is what brings about unity, that Muslims hold on to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that if all Muslims adhere to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it was transmitted to us by the Sahaba, as it was conveyed to us and taught to this ummah, by those who learned it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly. If the Muslims held on to this, they would not become divided. And this is a fact. And we see that most of the differences only occurred after them. It only occurred after them. Why? Because Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they conveyed of this deen, that which came to them from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Pure and unadulterated, pure and uncorrupted. Just as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received that revelation and conveyed and illustrated it to them, that is how they conveyed it to others. That is how they conveyed it to others. And we see great examples of this. Our Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, when conveying the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would even imitate his actions and his hayat. And if he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would illustrate in a hadith a particular matter in action, every sahaba would narrate that hadith with illustration of that same action. If Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when narrating a certain hadith, he would smile. Every sahabi who narrated it from him would smile and saying the same thing. Oh, subhanallah, this was the the trust, this was the adala, this was the character in terms of yani, narrating and uh, uh, preserving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore they are udul, kull, kulluhum. Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of them are udul. Udul and dabitin. That they are trustworthy and reliable in all that they narrated of this deen. And they are precise in it. And therefore, whoever opposes them, yani he is the one who has deviated from the haqq. And deviated from that which brings about unity. And sahaba, they are the yardstick. And not the opinions of those who came after them. So the third principle 
and fundamental, it follows up on the second one. As we said, the second one was unity and being one in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and the prohibition of splitting into groups, factions or sects in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third fundamental follows on from that one and that is due to its importance. It emphasizes one of the aspects which bring about unity. And that which is established in our Sharia, in the Quran and in the Sunnah and by Ijma. And by Ijma. This is the issue of Al-Ta'ah al Umur. Obedience to the Muslim leaders. The Shaykh says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Al-Aslu Thalith, the third fundamental, أن من تمام الاجتماع السمع والطاعة لمن تأمر علينا ولو كان عبدا حبشيا He says indeed from the perfection of unity is to hear and obey to whoever is given command over us even if it is an Abyssinian slave فبين الله هذا بيانا شافيا كافيا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified that with a sufficient and clear clarification بوجوه من أنواع البيان شرعا وقدرا with different aspects of expression in the sharia يعني and uh, logically ثم صار هذا الأصل then this fundamental became such لا يؤرف عند أكثر من يدعي العلم that it is not known by the majority of those who claim knowledge فكيف العمل به then I was still acting upon it I was still acting upon it طيب من تمام الاجتماع from the perfection of unity يعني that which will bring about Complete unity. Unity of the community as a whole. Unity of the nation as a whole. You know, and in terms of the Muslim Ummah, unity for the Ummah as a whole. So this is from that which would perfect that unity. That yes, we may say that as Muslims we are one body. As Muslims we are one Ummah. As Muslims we are connected and we are like like a single body as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said but from perfection of this unity it will only come about truly if we hear and obey to the one who is given command over us to the Amir we hear and obey to the Amir as wa ta'a لمن تأمر علينا This hearing and obeying to whoever is given command is made the Amir over us. Right? Because subhanallah there are so many matters in the deen that cannot be established without an Amir. So true unity upon the deen can never be attained without an Amir. If we make an example Al-Jihad. And in these times, and this day and age, and with the trials and tribulations the Ummah face, this is a topic that is raised often. Al-Jihad. Shouldn't we make Jihad? Shouldn't we fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What prevents us as the Ummah al islamiyah from making Jihad? We are not united behind one leader. This is what prevents us. We are not united behind one Amir, hearing and obeying, giving him asam wa ta'ah. So that when he says, Hayya ala al-jihad, come in the way of Allah to jihad, that the whole Ummah responds. This is not found. So jihad cannot be established except with an Amir. The hudud, the legislated punishments in Islam, that which secures or brings about 
and amen, security and safety, that through which Allah preserves life, that through which Allah preserves morals in society, you know, that through which Allah preserves righteous character and upright character through the hudud, through the penalties. Because if you commit adultery, there's a penalty. If you slander someone and accuse them falsely, there's a penalty. If you steal from someone, there's a penalty. Why can those hudud not be implemented? Because there's no amir. Because and if the community is not united under one amir, yani there is no one that can establish the hudud. No one can establish the hudud. I cannot say, you know what? Everyone needs to establish the hudud. And then all of us we go, no, subhanallah, this will be chaos and bloodshed. Therefore, there has to be an amir, and everyone has to hear and obey to the amir. This is, subhanallah, what will bring about perfection of unity, complete unity. This is what we see in the society of Medina, in the community of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that first, you know, Dawlatun Islamiyya, that first Islamic country, that we see one amir, and everyone yeah and obey. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu gave the command that this is what the Muslim ummah must follow, that model, must remain. That we remain united behind one Amir. Because as long as that occurs, there will be order, there will be progress, there will be security, there will be safety. You know, subhanallah, jihad will be established, zakah will be collected. Zakah will be collected. You know, the, the Ahlul Zimma, the people who are given protection under the Amir, they will be granted their protection. The Uhud, the contracts of the Muslims and their covenants will be upheld. So perfection of unity will come about with hearing and obeying to the Amir. Insha'Allah will give some of the examples from the Quran and the Sunnah with regards to this as we continue. He says, As-sam'i wa ta'a, right, liman ta'amra alayna wa in kana abdan habashiyah. Even if he is an Abyssinian slave. This example comes from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This comes from the, from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is a striking example because the Arabs took pride in them being Arabs. They took pride in the fact that they were Arabs. You know, they were the owners of slaves. Remember, at the time, they were the owners of slaves. Yet, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, when they said to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّهَا مَوْعِذَةُ مُوَدِّعٍ فَأُوْسِنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ This is like a farewell sermon. This is when Irbad ibn Sari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَعَذَنَا مَوْعِذَةً بَلِيغَةً He gave us a severe admonishment. ظرفت من العيون ووجلت من القلوب the eyes shed tears and the heart shook and it was a strong admonishment so we said يا رسول الله كأنا موعظة مودعين this is like the like a person's farewell sermon this is like the sermon of someone who's leaving فأوسنا so advise us, counsel us imagine the situation they are crying, their hearts are shaking. It seems that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is bidding them for farewell. So give us advice, ya Rasulullah. Give us counsel, ya Rasulullah. He said, Usikum bi taqwallahi azza wa jal. I advise you with the taqwa, with the fear of Allah azza wa jal. Wa sam'i wa ta'ah. And to ya and obey. وَإِن تَأَمَّرَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَبْدٌ حَبَشِي Even if an Abyssinian slave is made your leader. Even if an Abyssinian slave is made your leader, you all, you listen and you obey. Yeah and obey. Now, subhanAllah, why? In this there is the preservation of the community. It's the preservation of the ummah, not just you. Not just your faction of the community, not just your tribe, not just your nationality. But in here there is yani, preservation of the entire ummah. So he mentioned someone who's not from your nationality, 
And not only that, he's, he's an Abyssinian, and not only that, he's a slave. But if he's your Amir, you must hear and obey. You must listen, and you must obey. And for the sake of preservation of the unity of the Ummah. He says, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified that. Bayanan shafi and kafiya. With a sufficient and clear clarification. And this clarification is in the Quran and is in the Sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu wa ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-Rasoola wa ulil amri minkum. Command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority over you. أولو الأمر منكم أولو الأمر الأمراء أولو الأمر هم الأمراء people of command the leadership obey them Allah تبارك وتعالى commands with it you know and it's so important that we understand that this is the command of Allah and the command of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم why because like I said in this day and age with the fitan, with the trials and tribulations, and the factions, the, the, the splitting, you find that this principle, even though it is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Rasulullah, it is neglected. It is, it is neglected and it is overlooked and it is even opposed. It is even opposed. When we say, you must hear and obey, to the to the wa alaikum salam wa barakatuh to the umara al muslimin to the leaders of the muslims are they not those who say you are bootlickers huh? <laughs> look here you 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 praising the 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 leaders uh, the despots the whatever they call them right subhanallah that you are not supposed to say this Yet it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who commanded this. You madkhali. Huh? So you must obey the Muslim leader. You madkhali. You jami. For what? Because we say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. And we uphold the principle that is laid down in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the Muslims must hear and obey the Muslim ruler. This is what Allah says. It's what Allah says. And for what does Allah command it? And for what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam command it? To preserve the ummah. And your concern is not to preserve the ummah. Your concern is not to preserve the ummah. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala knows this what is in the hearts of some of them. Some of them are enemies to Islam and the Muslims. Who are parading and who has been put there. They have been put into this ummah. To stir unrest and dissension and bloodshed and fitna in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They've been put there for that purpose. You know, the Muslims, they need to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah and you will find the solutions. And Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I mentioned in the hadith of Al-Irbab, he said that you must hear and obey even if the leader is an Abyssinian slave. Must hear and obey. Right. So the people who oppose this principle, this asshole, they will say, yes, but what if he is unjust? What if he is unfair? And this is the claim that has been made yani, by the first and the, the, the forefather of the Khawarij. Now we are speaking about what? Asam wa ta'ah. Obedience to the to the leaders, right? The Muslim leaders. From the first sects that emerged in Islam was the Khawarij. Right? Khawarij. Why were they called Khawarij? Because of the action of Khuruj. Right? Not Tabligh Jamaat. No? The Khawarij also made Khuruj, different Khuruj. Not three days, not, not that Khuruj. Khuruj and Ta'ati Wulatil Umur. That they emerge from obedience. 
They emerged from obedience. They took themselves out from giving obedience to the Wadat al-Umur, to the Muslim leader. Right? And through that, through that came about what? Al-Khuruj and Al-Jama'ah. That through that they also exited from the Muslim community. So they became known as the renegades, Khawarij. Khawarij. They caused, subhanallah, the most bloodshed. I think them and the Shia, they can compete in, in, in killing Muslims. And in these two groups of innovation, they can compete. They killed, subhanallah, from the best of people, Sahaba. They fought Sahaba. They fought Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and those who were with him from the Sahaba and refused to give obedience. Refused to give obedience. Right? Because they wanted that the Amir do what they say. Remember there was a judicial matter that came up. It was after the killing of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So certain people wanted yani that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu's killers must be brought to justice first. Right? And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he saw the condition of the ummah and he said, this is not the time for this. And so he continued. And so some, they, they disobeyed Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Right? And the hypocrites, they, they were the ones, they just, you know, they're stoking the fire. Until the Muslims, you know, fight each other. This is what they want, ultimately. Subhanallah, sahaba. They revolted against the Muslim leaders and whoever obeys the Muslim leaders and the only, how could they revolt when the Ahadith and the, and the Quran is clear that you must obey? So they, they declared them disbelievers. They declared them disbelievers. People from being negligent with regards to takfir. They are the furthest from the people. That they don't make takfir of people. You know, and subhanallah, this is from the traits of the Khawarij. In our time, you find Khawarij that they are best described as the Khawarij of old. Some of them were described Khawarij al Qaada. They are the seated Khawarij. They are the seated Khawarij. What does this mean? They incite others to revolt against the Muslim leaders. And they cause revolutions and dissension in the Muslim lands. And then they are sitting somewhere else. And he is enjoying his life and his children is in a Kafir university. You know, and they are living lavish lives in the lands of disbelief. And the Muslim lands are in turmoil. This is Al-Khawarij Al-Qaada. This is the sitting Khawarij. You know, the, the keyboard Mujahideen. You know, is jihad, jihad. Where is your jihad? No, in in Saudi. Rather, Saudi is a Muslim country. <laughs> why, why don't you go somewhere else with your jihad? You're living in America. Imagine, he's sitting in America, and then he says, jihad in Yemen. Jihad in Yemen. Yani, Muslims must kill each other. You know, the leader is a kafir, and everyone who obeys him is also a kafir. And everyone who look at look at Pakistan. Everyone who works for the government, what the Taliban was doing there and, and, the, and the Khawarij. The government is kafir. So whoever does not say the government is kafir is also kafir. And whoever works in any government position is a kafir also. Killing the postman. The postman, because he's working for the government. He's happy to work for the kafir government, so he's a kafir also. Takfir, right? Why to justify, to justify al-khuruj and sam'i wa ta'ah. To not establish this fundamental of Ahl sunnah this fundamental of Islam, which is to listen, to hear, and to obey the Muslim rulers. This is, this is, this is why when people come and they talk like that, we say to them, are you khariji? We don't play with it. We don't play with it because of the danger it contains. Wallahi, the danger in this is the, is, is the lives of Muslims, the blood of Muslims, the wealth of Muslims, the honor of Muslims. 
Look everywhere where these khawaris go and say revolt against the leader. Who gets killed? The Muslims. And this is why we say people need to wake up. These calls that call for revolt in Muslim lands, if you want to make jihad, why don't you say come and go fight China? There are mushriks and atheists. Make an example. Huh? Say, no, no, we're going to fight Pakistan. Right, we're going to fight Pakistan. Want to fight? They want to fight the Muslim lands only. And here in Africa even, we now have a problem even here. Where, where is it? Mozambique, Zimbabwe. They're right next door. Khawarij. You know, subhanallah. Boko Haram. Crazy, insane people. Just like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described them, they cannot help but live up to their descriptions. They will kill the people of Islam and they will leave the idol worshippers alone. They live up to it. They live up to it. Oh, subhanallah. Now, so they say, you know, the, the leader is unjust. Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked the same question. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in fact, he described them. Just so that we can, we can look at this shubha that they bring to call the people to not hear and obey the Muslim rulers. So they say, he is unjust. Yani he is a zalim, zalam a shaab. He was in, unjust to the, to the nation, he's taking the money, whatever. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Khudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anu, when, you know, uh, um, he spoke about the leaders that will come after. And he said that they will, yani they will be amongst them. In fact, if you, if you look at the wording of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, يَكُونُونَ أَئِمَّةِ يَسْتَنُّونَ They will follow غير سُنَّتِي other than my sunnah وَيَحْتَدُونَ بِغَيْرِ هُدَاي And they will follow other than my guidance. Right? They won't follow the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. They won't follow the guidance of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Right? And he said فِيهِمْ رِجَالٌ Amongst them there will be men. قلوبهم قلوب الشياطين في جثمان إنس. Their hearts will be the hearts of devils in the bodies of men. Will be the hearts of devils in the bodies of men. So, I think this is describing the worst of type of people. So, he said, يا رسول الله ف يعني ماذا أصنع إن أدركت ذلك؟ What must I do if I reach that? What must I do if I find myself in such a situation? Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said, تسمع وتطيع للأمير. You must listen and you must obey to the Amir. وإن ضرب ظهرك وأخذ مالك. Even if he beats your back and he takes your wealth, فاسمع وأطيع. Listen and obey. And subhanallah. So you come with the shubha that he is a zalim. He is unjust. He is tyrannical. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the sahabi, even if he beats your back and he takes your wealth, you must listen and obey. And subhanallah, when you look at these people who say, you know, the leader is unjust, the leader, and when you ask, did he stop you from praying? You know, like Al-Hassan, uh, Al-Basri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, his wisdom, that when the Khawarij came to him, he said to them, you are people of dunya. To them, you are people of dunya. You're not people of deen, you're people of dunya. Although the Khawarij, what do they do? They pray and they, they you know, the appearance is to be very pious. So they said, why do you say this? He said, because the Amir that you're fighting, did he prevent you from salah? He said, no. Did he prevent you from zakah? No. Did he prevent you from fasting? And did he prevent you from hajj? Did he prevent you from any of the ibadat of Islam? So he said, no. So he said, so what did he prevent you from? He prevented you from dunya. That's why you're fighting him. That's why you're fighting him. And when you look at the Muslim lands, what are they fighting about? 
They're fighting about dunya. They're fighting about dunya. Everyone wants the chair. They want to revolve because they want to, to rule. Why? No, he is misusing the funds. No, he wants to misuse the funds instead. Oh, subhanallah. It's, it's about dunya. It's not about deen. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Sahabi in, in, in the narration of Sahih Muslim, he doesn't even mention that the Amir is the one hitting you. In the narration of Sahih Muslim, it says, وَإِن, uh, وَإِن ضُرِبَ ظَهْرُكَ وَأُخِذَ مَالُكَ That even if your back is beaten and your wealth is taken, you must listen and obey. You must listen and obey. In the other narrations, in Mustadak al-Hakim and other uh, narrations, is in ضَرَبَ ظَهْرَكَ If he beats your back, and he takes your wealth. You must listen and obey. What is more important, subhanallah, the welfare of the entire ummah, the safety and security of the Muslims, or of the individual? Of the ummah, without a doubt. You know, subhanallah, so when these groups come, and they try to stir up these revolutions and dissension, they are looking at what? At their own interest, at the expense of the entire ummah. At the expense of the entire ummah. You know, and those who, who shout for them, and those who are sitting at home, and they are shouting against the Muslim leaders, they are khawarij ul qaada. They are the sitting khawarij. They are inciting it over there, and they're sitting very comfortably in their homes. And let the people get killed somewhere else. Then they say some of them, yes, but he's corrupt. He's corrupt. Is allowing, uh, is allowing things that is haram, or is doing things that is haram. Right? Is doing things that is haram. Our mother, Um Salama, radiallahu ta'ala anha, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to her, also the imams that will come after. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that you know there will be imams and you will reject a lot of what they do and you will some of what they do will be correct some of what they do you will approve you know there will be good things they do and there will also be bad things they do right and then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said فَمَنْ عَرَفَ فَقَدْ بَرِئَهُ فَمَنْ عَرَفَ بَرِئَهُ وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ سَلِمَهُ وَلَكِنْ مَنْ رَدِيَ وَتَابَعَ He said, whoever man arafa, meaning that whoever recognizes this bad, whoever recognizes what is bad and he doesn't partake and he doesn't, he's not happy with it, he's not part of it. Right? Bari'ah. Bari'ah. He is free of it. Right? وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ سَلِمَهُ And whoever rejects it, and he rejects it completely. The other one, Arafah, he recognized it, he saw it, and he, he, you know, he just, he frees himself from it. But the other one, Ankara, and he, even though he's not able to do anything about it, he, he rejects it. Then he is safe, and the ulama, when they make sharh of the hadith, some say he is safe of nifaq. He's not a hypocrite. Maybe he wasn't in a position to say anything, right? But he's not, he's free of hypocrisy and he's free of the sin. He's not part of it. Right? Today, what do they do? Oh, you, you're not saying something about Saudi? Oh, there was a concert, you're not saying anything? Subhanallah, you're all the same, you're all part of this. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't make everyone responsible. Everyone has now become an Amir for himself. Everyone must, is a country speaking about another country or an Amir speaking against another Amir. No. This type of chaos is not allowed in Islam. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the one who knows it, he recognizes it, he frees himself from it. Khalas, he is free. Bari'a. Yani bari'a dimmatu. He is not responsible for it. And likewise, the one man ankara, the one who makes inkar, yani by himself, in his heart, or generally, right, generally, I'm yani speaking about the thing. He says, this is haram, like our ulama do. No. Subhanallah. Which alim, 
from the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah said, I can't say this halal. Which alim? No alim. Huh? No alim ever said it. No alim ever said it is halal for the woman to not wear hijab. No alim ever said it. But they said, look, the scholars of Saudi. Wallahi, the ulama, they speak against these things, subhanallah. They speak against it openly. They speak against it openly. That's why you can get the recordings. That's why you can take a clip from the internet and put it out there. Sheikh Salih Fawzan speaking against music, what music concerts can put it there and say, oh no, uh, they, they keep quiet because they're afraid of the, of the rulers. No, they, they don't keep quiet. They don't keep quiet. They just don't tell the people, oh, now you must revolt. Huh? Now you must cause riots and now you must burn down the buildings and now you must get people killed and shot. No, they have the wisdom, they have the knowledge to know that that is not required. Who is sinful? The one that is happy with it and follows it. The one that is happy with it and follows it. And this is why Sheikh Ramzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, in many of the lectures that he gave here and that he's giving in, in, in Saudi, over the last year, since he's been here, Wherever he has gone, when he has given the lectures about uniting the ummah and, and, and strengthening the ummah behind the Muslim leaders, he always says, who takes you by your ears? <laughs> huh? Who takes you by your ears and takes you to a concert? Is there anyone that tells you go to the concert? Huh? No one tells you to go. No one says you must participate in it. No one says you must do the wrong. You know, and this is correct. This is correct. None of the ulama has permitted it. It is the person himself who decides, I want to go there, I want to participate in it. And then the one who is shouting here, look, they had a concert there. You go into his house and the music is playing. Huh? Subhanallah. Hypocrisy, this is hypocrisy. This is hypocrisy. Oh, he's speaking, look there, Saudi had a music concert, but he's not praying. He's not making salah. Oh, subhanallah, you in a, you in a worse situation, brother. You know, maybe some of the people at that concert, you know, when it was Dhuwar, they went for Dhuwar. When it was Asr, they went for Asr. You in a worse situation. Subhanallah. So, what did our mother, Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anna, what did she ask Rasulullah? Afala nuqatiluhum ya Rasulullah? Mustn't we fight them ya Rasulullah? Why we fight those leaders? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La ma sallaw. No. As long as they pray. Subhanallah. This is Sahih Muslim in, in, in Jami'u Tirmidhi and others. Sahih Hadith. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No. Don't fight them as long as they pray. Yani when he's praying, he's establishing that he's a Muslim. He's establishing that he's a Muslim. He may be sinful. He may be sinful, subhanallah, he may be corrupt, he may be weak in iman, but he prays, he's a Muslim. You know? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, don't fight him, ma sallu, as long as they pray. Subhanallah, we, we look at the condition today, and you see that the sharia has covered all of it. Every situation, and ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah, because they adhere to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, they know how to respond in every situation. You see, this is a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In clarifying the ayah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qur'an and Sunnah. And what was the actions of the Sahaba? They followed upon it. Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they followed upon it. Even when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, called uh, the hadith of Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he said da'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called us, he summoned us فبايعناه, and we gave the bay'ah to him gave the pledge of allegiance to him فَقَالَ فِيمَا أَخَذَ عَلَيْنَا and he said uh, uh, to us in that which he took upon us of the bay'ah that as sami wa ta'ah 
We have to hear and obey. في من شطينا ومكرهنا. In that which we like, and we have zeal for it, we have energy for it, and that which we dislike also. وفي أسرنا ويسرنا. And in our difficulty, and in our ease also. وأثرتن علينا. And even when others are preferred over us. And even when others are preferred over us. وَأَنْ لَا نُنَازِعَ الْأَمْرَ أَهْلَهِ And that we don't dispute with the people in authority with regards to the authority. We don't dispute with the people in authority with regards to the authority. He said, إِلَّا أَنْ تَرَوْ كُفْرًا بَوَاحَا Except if you see clear kufr. Except if you see clear kufr, clear disbelief. إِنَّكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي بُرْحَانِ that you have a proof from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you, yani for it and against him. You will have a proof against the leader. Kufran bawahan, what the ulama say? The ulama say, yani, yudhiruhu wa yusarihu bih. That he makes his kufr clear and he expresses it openly. This is kufran bawahan. This is the only time Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them permission he said, إِلَّا أَنْ تَرَوْ كُفْرًا بَوَاحًا Except if you see clear kufr. And some of the ulama, they say, الْكُفْرُ يعني لا يتخاصمان في اثنان It's kufr regarding which two people will not dispute. No two people will dispute about it. It is so clear. It is so clear. It is not بِالتَّعْوِيلُ It is not your interpretation of something which makes it kufr. It is so clear that no two Muslims will dispute that it is kufr. What do we have today? Amatun nas, juhal, ignorant laymen, disputing the ulama regarding the actions of the leaders, what is kufr and what is not. He doesn't even know with regards to his own actions what is kufr and what is not. Huh? This is the problem, subhanallah. This is the asal from the usul of our deen. This is um, a asal, a fundamental through which we preserve the ummah, preserve its unity and preserve its strength. Then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Wallahi, there's lots of adillah. There's lots of proof. There's lots of proof from the Quran and from the Sunnah, from the Sahaba. However, I mean, don't have time to mention all the proofs. So we suffice with what we have mentioned, Alhamdulillah, from Bukhari and Muslim. You know? The Sheikh says, ثم صار هذا هذا الأصل لا يعرف عند أكثر من يدعي العلم. Then it became this asl that it is unknown to majority of those who claim to have knowledge. To the majority of those who claim to have knowledge, when you look at those who are calling الثورة. Tawrat, yani revolution, Rabi al Arabi, Arab Spring, all of this, as Sahwa, awakening, all of these people that go to these revolts that failed and caused Muslim lives to be lost and Muslim infrastructure to be destroyed and Muslim wealth to be squandered, all of those people claim to be scholars. Huh? They claim to be scholars, they claim to be ulama. They claim to be ulama. Don't you know this asal? This asal is from the Quran. This asal is from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the most authentic books after the Quran and all the other ahadith books. You claim to be a scholar but you don't know this asal? Subhanallah. How then is this ummah still going to act upon it? And how are they going to act upon it if they don't know it? The man thinks when he speaks against the leader, he's, he's, a, he's a good scholar. Huh? When he speaks against the Muslim leader, and they say, MashaAllah, this guy is Amiran bil ma'roof. He's one who orders with the good and prohibits the evil. In the meantime, he is committing evil. What he's doing is committing evil. Muslims must wake up. And they say, look, look, in, in, in Saudi, 
uh, they lock up the scholars. They lock up the scholars. Or they say they lock up the best scholars. They didn't lock up Ibn Baz. Rahmatullah alayhi. They didn't lock up Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al Sheikh. Rahmatullah alayhi. They didn't lock up uh, 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 Sheikh Fawzan. Sheikh Luhaydan. Huh? Subhanallah. They, what, what, what scholars are you talking about? No, this guy who, who said we must, we must, what do we must camp out there in the square until the government does this and until. Kharij huh? ideologies. Khawarij ideas. Khawarij ideas. You saw it elsewhere. You didn't refer back to the Quran and the Sunnah to give judgment on it. You thought, you know what? Everyone's following it. The scholars don't judge by what the majority of people are, are, are shouting for. Scholars don't follow what the majority of the people, yani they are excited for. You must, wallahi, you must look, look at Egypt. This Rabi' this Arab Spring, subhanAllah. Look at this, this Sahwa, this awakening. Look at all these calls for Islamic states. Hundreds of thousands of Muslims from Ahlul Sunnah lost their lives for nothing. We say, Alhamdulillah, they lost their lives in, in the way of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. If they, if they intention, they, you know, many of them they don't know. The layman doesn't know. They are misled by these scholars of Batil, Kharijis, Usama, Bin Laden. You know, subhanAllah, you still find a person, imagine in Cape Town, claiming to have knowledge, graduating from Medina University, and Osama bin Laden is a great mujahid. What did he do for Islam? This is, wallah, we don't ask these questions. Tayyib, those people who said uh, revolt in Syria, Islamic State in Syria, what did they do for Islam? Is it, where's, the, where's the fruits? Where's the Thamarat? Subhanallah, no Thamarat. Egypt, where's the Thamarat? Iraq, where's the Thamarat? Where's the fruits? There's no fruits. Why? Because your action was not legislated in the Quran and the Sunnah. Your action is not a Mubarak action. It was not legislated in Quran and Sunnah. This is why it failed to bring any fruits to the Ummah. This caused loss upon loss. These people, Wallahi, let them say whatever they want to say. Madkhali, Jami, uh, 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 Saudi Salafi. Um, Subhanallah, I never ever even studied in Saudi. This is Saudi, Saudi Salafi. Look, the Saudi people must hear and obey. <laughs> Subhanallah, this is our deen. And this is the Ummah. Of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not your group and your faction and your party to play with like you want. That you spread the likes of this battle amongst the Muslims. No, subhanallah, ahlul sunnah wal jama'ah must raise our heads and must raise our voices and speak the haq and let them say whatever they want to say. Let them say whatever they want to say. Let them call you whatever they, names they want to call you. You speak the haq for the sake of Allah. Speak the haq for the sake of Allah. You know, let them say what they, uh, whatever, let them blame you for whatever. This is our deen. The majority of those who claim to have knowledge, they don't know this principle. We saw in the Masajid in Cape Town, when the people were revolting in Egypt, oh, they were so excited. They were so excited, mashaAllah. And when it failed, <laughs> subhanAllah, no one says, you know what, sorry. We apologize to the ummah. We apologize to the masses. We apologize to all those people's families. Yani, who got killed. No, we'll never apologize. They are deviants. One, in, 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 even in towns in the masjid. Well, they brought someone, he came, they ah, Athawra al-Mubarakah. He said, no, why? Because Sheikh Muhammad Hassan said so. Muhammad Hassan said, it's a Thawra Mubarakah, it's a, it's a Mubarak revolution. Revolting 
is against the rules of Islam. How is it Mubarak? How is it Mubarak if it's against the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Can never be Mubarak, will always be a failure. Then also, we must remember that some, some will now say, yes, but uh, there the, the, the is Kufran Bawahan. There is Kufran Bawahan from some of, some of these people. You are not the ulama. <laughs> you know, you are not the ulama to decide this. When you look at all the khawarij, all the khawarij. Remember when they were here in, in Africa? They had, a, they had a mufti. The mufti was a rivet. He was a rivet. I can't remember Abu who he was. But he was a white rivet. Right? <laughs> a white rivet. He had become Muslim and he had now learned with him. And in his five years, six years that he was with him, he became the mufti. You know, and he was just blanket making takfir of the whole ummah, the whole ummah who is not behind this uh, Islamic state. <laughs> they are all kuffar, they are all murtadun. You know, subhanallah, it's like they let him in and he threw everyone else out. You know, this is the reality. Khudasa'ul asnan, sufaha'ul ahlam. That they are youngsters, khudasa'ul asnan, youngsters, young people. Right? Sufaha'ul ahlam, with foolish aspirations, foolish dreams. Imagine here, Jamil gets up tomorrow morning, hey, we're going to establish Islamic State in South Africa. Come guys, get your knives and forks. Huh? Make sense. Well, make no sense. You know, subhanAllah, but this is, this is the description of the khawarij. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is how they will be, youngsters with foolish dreams. His own house, he can't turn into an Islamic state. Huh? You say, brother, you must tell your wife to come up. Oh, sheikh, that woman. <laughs> you don't know her. <laughs> they say, you don't know her. You know, subhanallah. Now imagine that same individual. He said, ah, you know what? That leader, brother, you can't even run a household. How can you run a country? Uh, you want to criticize people that have to run an entire country, a Muslim country. You want to criticize them, you can't, you can't run your household. Oh, subhanallah. So when people speak like this, teach them. Allah, teach them. But most of them, they don't know how people get caught up in the hype. They get caught up in the hype all the time. Look at Palestine. Caught up in the hype. From the things we should know, even if the leader is a kafir. If the leader is a kafir, we do not have the permission or it is not allowed for us to revolt unless we have the qudra, unless we have the ability to fight him. Remember this. If the Muslim, if you say, okay, you say the Muslim is a kafir, طيب. so now we must revolt. Brother, how many tanks do you have in your backyard there? Because he's got hundreds of tanks, right? How many rockets do you have stored there? Because he's got thousands. You know, how many weapons do you have? No, we've got, we, Fulan has a nine millimeter. <laughs> you know, but that's so and so has got the, subhanallah, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And this is why the Muslims must adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah. And what our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded and not jump at every shout. You know, when people say, ah, oh, everyone must do this, then we all run along. No, we're not sheep. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells the sahaba, la takunu imma'a. Don't be blind followers. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, so. don't be blind followers. Don't be yes men, everything, everyone says, yes, 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 we go along. No, Quran and Sunnah. This is our criteria. You know, this is our criteria, this is our dustur, this is our constitution. We look back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We yeah and obey the Muslim ruler. We, alhamdulillah, we in South Africa, there's no one Muslim ruler over us. You know, I don't know why people in South Africa are so intent 
on ruling Saudi Arabia and Egypt and all the Muslim countries. Your first step, make Hijrah there. First step for you, go make Hijrah. Move there. Move there and then you speak. You know? If you look at all those who are speaking, they run away first. No? <laughs> they first run away and they are given asylum in the lands of the disbelievers. And then they speak against the Muslims. Once they live nicely in Britain and in America and in Sweden and in Germany, now they start speaking against the Muslims. Why? Because it's safe there, living under the protection of the kuffar. Hmm? Subhanallah. And then wanting to cause bloodshed in Muslim lands. Allah protect us from the likes of these people. Allah protect the ummah from the khawarij in all their forms. And protect us from the callers of fitna of trials and tribulations and may Allah Ta'ala keep us united upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it was brought to us by the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anum Ajma'een Naktafi bihada Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen